how to make peace with your belly fat. <laughs> when I was a young girl, my Vietnamese refugee mother, a manicurist, went in for plastic surgery. A tummy tuck, the narrowing of her nostrils, and a chin implant, and figured she would be home the next day with her beautiful new body. Two hours into the operation, she lost oxygen to her brain. The human brain can go without oxygen for up to four minutes before permanent brain damage occurs. Fourteen minutes passed before the surgeon called 911. After five days in a coma, she flatlined. She was just 38 years old, and I was 11. For the next two decades, my family never spoke of her or how she died. I kept asking questions, but they said I was being too emotional, stuck, living in the past. And I believed them. But I always felt like there was something missing, and nothing I could do could fill that void. Even though I lost my mother to extreme beauty standards, my father and aunties would openly criticize my body at the dinner table. No one is going to love you if you're too fat. And when I say fat, I mean they were concerned I wasn't a size zero or size two. I was a monstrous size six, and this terrified them. They were afraid that I would become unmarriageable, destined to die alone. And they reminded me of this every time I called, every time I visited, every time they fed me, which made eating quite complicated. But it's those kinds of lines that can sink deep into your psyche, minimizing who you think you are and what you think you could be. My worthiness was tied to my body because my elders' approval meant everything to me. So then I took on their degrading words, and then I did the work for them. I became desperate, willing to date anyone with a pulse, hoping that if they cared for me, then maybe they could fill the void of my mother's death. I stayed in abusive relationships too long. I gave my body away to strangers like it was no big deal. But maybe the honest truth I couldn't admit was that I didn't think I was a big deal. I didn't deserve to be happy because I was so flawed. And if I was in a relationship, no matter how dysfunctional, I better stick with it because who knows if I could get anything better. All of this thinking took up a lot of energy. Instead of focusing on pursuing my own dreams, I became obsessed with my body in all the wrong ways. I remember Right after my mom died, I started a food and exercise journal. I've done all the diets, tried all the exercise fads, gone on silent meditation retreats, chanted positive affirmations in the mirror, and none of it has ever worked. None of it has ever worked because I was so disconnected from my body. It wasn't a part of me. It was a problem that needed to be fixed. My body was a nuisance, and it was the very thing that stood in the way of me being loved for my family and from me being worthy. All things told, I was a living hypocrite. I wrote and performed a solo show about how beauty killed my mother. Yet even then, I felt insecure in my own skin getting dressed in the mornings, trying on clothes at stores, it's all so triggering. And then after having a baby, I was devastated about my body. All I wanted was to return to my pre-baby weight, but when I finally got there, I was still disappointed because my body had this belly fat that hung off my body, but now with ugly, ugly stretch marks. Another reminder of my imperfection. My belly fat is a part of my body that I hate the most. I think about it every day. 
But now as a mother, I realized it's up to me to stop intergenerational trauma around body insecurity. My mother never felt like she was enough. I don't feel like I'm enough. But I don't want my son to feel that way too. My journey to making peace with my belly fat changed this year at a women's summer solstice gathering where I had the chance to participate in a three-hour sweat lodge ceremony. But they also call it a prayer lodge because you do much more than sweat. <laughs> and more than sweat, I did. This prayer lodge is this large dome made out of freshly cut branches, hand tied together, covered in dozens of blankets to keep the heat in. The ceremony started at 8 p.m. The sky was dark, the stars twinkling, the moon beaming down on us. It felt very poetic. <laughs> us women were wearing bathrobes and sarongs and we were sitting on this blue tarp and we were instructed to make prayer ties, taking square pieces of fabric and sprinkling in combinations of tobacco, cornmeal, sage, and lavender. I made a series of these pouches and tied them to a longer string, whispering my intentions for the evening. I wanted to make peace with my belly fat. We made our way over to a large fire and formed an intimate circle. Inside the center were these large rocks that looked like dinosaur eggs sparking red in the fire. We went around the circle, said our wish, and tossed our prayer ties into the fire and watched them burn, the smoke sending signals up to the great unknown. Our clothes came flying off and then we crawled into the prayer lodge on our hands and feet and found a spot in the darkness, our bare knees touching. Once we were all in, the fire tender used these tongs and brought the rocks in one by one. We were encouraged to praise each rock and exclaim how beautiful she was and thank the grandmother spirits for joining us. The final flap was closed by a blanket and then the heat began to rise. Sweat started dripping down my face. I imagined we would do a lot of primal howling and panting, and then maybe the voice of God would descend down upon me and cure me once and for all. <laughs> I would crawl out of that lodge, a new woman, wisdom downloaded into every fiber of my being. <laughs> but it didn't exactly happen that way. An entire hour passed where I was unbearably hot and all the women next to me were having their big epiphanies, weeping their truths into the circle. And the only feeling that I had that kept resonating in me over and over again was thirst. <laughs> I crawled out of that lodge, took a water break, came back in, and that's when it happened. My fat and I had a one-on-one. -on -one. I asked it questions and then it spoke back to me. Why can't you be what I want you to be? But instead of my fat reassuring me of my innate worthiness, it was pissed at me. <laughs> Why can't you see me the way I want to be seen? I froze. That was the same exact dynamic between my living father and me. It kept talking. You wanted a baby? You got one. Haven't I given you everything you ever wanted? I guess so. So then I do exactly what I'm programmed to do and I look the way I'm supposed to look. Your mother looked like me. Your grandmother looked like me. But you get upset when you're not Barbie thin. You keep expecting me to be something I'm not. It's not me with the problem, it's you. That echo between my father and me. The mismatch expectations. The constant disappointment. Never being enough, no matter what. And that's when it hit me. This was intergenerational trauma in action. My mother's elders warned her that her worth was tied to her body. My elders did the same to me. And here I was, doing the work for them, beating myself up in their stead. But when I was putting myself down, 
I wasn't just judging me. I realized I was also judging my ancestors. The way my body looked wasn't just my own doing, but rather it was this byproduct of the traumas my ancestors endured that have spanned centuries. Famine, war upon war, a refugee boat escape. Everything that my ancestors went through influences what my body looks like today. Their bodies were capable and resilient, and mine was too. But every time I was disgusted with my body, I was essentially saying I was ashamed of where I came from and who I came from. There I was, now at a fork in the road. I could be stuck in my own samsara and endless suffering around my body, or I can change. If only I could see my body as my ancestor's last gift to me, something to be grateful for, then maybe the struggles with my body could finally change. The memories of the dinner table came flooding back to me. All the ways my family made me feel so small, where love was conditional. All inner child Susan wanted was to be heard, to be listened to. She wanted to belong, to be seen as she really was. And while my elders may not have the capacity to do that for me in this lifetime, now as an adult, I have the agency to do that for me and my body. What would it look like if I radically witnessed my belly fat. All my body was asking for was for the space to say something back. So here's the big idea. What if I listened? A week later, I went to a store and did what I've been terrified to do my entire adult life. I tried on a crop top. <laughs> I was so scared my friend had to coach me through the dressing room door. And when I finally gathered all my courage and put it on, I forced myself to look in the mirror. It looked like a shrunken shirt and I looked like a troll. <laughs> but instead of a disgusting stomach, I saw something I've never noticed before. I saw life. I saw all the bellies that came before me to birth me. My belly fat was full of stories passed down from generation to generation. For so long, this fat has been this secret that I've been hiding. But now, in a crop top, she was the star of the show. <laughs> While I bought this shirt and honestly don't wear it out much, one thing for sure has changed. I've cracked open this possibility of listening to my body more. When I'm eating, I'll catch myself scrolling on the phone and then I'll stop, suddenly conscious of the warmth of the food moving down my throat, conscious of this miracle happening where my body is converting food to energy effortlessly so that I can live the life I wanna live. And every night, I hold my belly fat like she's a newborn baby. And I whisper all the ways that I'm thankful for her. I'm nursing her back from a wounded place in hopes that one day she will feel safe to feel free. My ancestors came to me in that prayer lodge that day to teach me that to make peace with my belly fat, I needed to cultivate a practice where I listen to my body, love my body, and then realize it's actually not about me, but the next generation. Thank you.